Another place where this model fits very well is in the decay of radioactive substances, which decay at a rate proportional to their mass. They fit the equation that the change in the mass dm dt equals k times m. It's proportional to the mass at time t. m of t, then, of course, is a solution to this equation, so it's of the form m0 times e to the kt, where m0 is the mass of the substance at time t equals zero. And the half-life of a radioactive substance is the time required for half of the quantity to decay. One place where this is very useful is carbon dating of artifacts. The half-life of carbon-14 is approximately T1 half equal to 5730 years. And there's a little variety in this depending on variables such as location um, and so on. What happens is when a plant or animal dies, it stops taking in carbon and the carbon it contains starts to decay. And we can use this to figure out the age of artifacts by estimating the original mass of carbon-14 in the object and checking the amount at present. Then because we know the half-life, we can figure out the value of k and estimate the age of the artifact. And here's an example we're going to look at. Suppose a bowl made of oak has about 40% of the carbon-14 that a, a similar quantity of living oak would have today, estimate the age of the bowl. How would we go about this? Well, we know that the amount of carbon in the object t years after it was made is the original amount m of zero times e to the kt. And now we have to find k and we know the half-life of carbon-14. And obviously this is a calculation that if you do once, you know what the k value is going to be. So we have m, the mass of carbon, after 5,730 years is one half of the original amount, one half of m of zero. So therefore m of 5,730 divided by m of zero is one half. And now replacing the mass after 5,730 years, by its value in this equation above, we get m0 times e to the 5,730k divided by m0 is equal to 1 half, but cancelling the m0s, we get that that is equal to e to the 5,730k. So to find k, we have to solve this equation, 1 half equals e to the 5730k, and of course we apply the natural logarithm to both sides to get to that k. So we have the natural log of 1 half is 5730k, and now solving for k we get that it's equal to the natural log of 1 half divided by 5730. Now remember the natural log of 1 half is a negative number, so k is negative, which agrees with the fact that we're talking about the decay of carbon-14 here. So to find the age, we solve for the time t when the carbon-14 has decayed to 40% of its original value. So we need to express that in mathematical equation. So we need to solve for t when m of t divided by m of 0 is 0.4. And of course, m of t is going to be m0 times e to the kt. So the m0s will cancel. And our equation we have to solve for t in is e to the kt equals 0.4. Now we know the value of k, and applying the natural log to both sides of that equation, we have kt equals the natural log of 0.4, and t is the natural log of 0.4 over k, and substituting the value we found for k, we find that that's approximately 7,575 years. Now, of course, you would give a margin of error here, 
based on your margin of error for the half-life of carbon-14. Scientists obviously don't reinvent the wheel every time they use this. The formula they use for reference is T equals the natural log of the current mass divided by M0 divided by the natural log of 1 half times the half-life of carbon-14, which is exactly what we derived from first principles.